Welcome back to three months of modal logic, it's equal to 100 days of logic here with Carnades.org. Today we are going to be looking at a big question in deontic logic, which is why deontic reduction fails. It's important to note that we're not saying that these deontic reductive systems that are offered by Kanger and Anderson are contradictory in some way, that they're insufficient to represent any kind of deontic logic. What we are saying, however, is that they are not reductions of standard deontic logic because they are implicitly going to see it as a weaker version of deontic logic. Okay? And here's why. So... I would encourage you, however, even just from this screen to try to guess why. Why do you think they are going to fail? But let's move forward and just tell you. So recall for a moment system T, also known as system M, where necessity implies truth. System T is going to be system K with axiom M or axiom T, different people call it different things, added in. Axiom M goes as follows. It's necessary that A implies that A. This seems to be a very, very intuitive axiom. Whatever is necessary is the case. And the corollary to that is going to be that anything that is the case is possible. Basically, what both of these axioms are saying is that the actual world is a possible world. So if something is necessary, if something hits all possible worlds, it's going to hit the actual world as well. And if something happens in the actual world, that's going to count as something happening in one possible world. Axiom M, or axiom T, says that the actual world is a possible world. While a deontic version of T, it's obligatory that P implies P, might be too strong, since just because something's obligatory doesn't mean that people are actually going to do it or follow that obligation. It seems that a logical system is really hard to create without this alethic axiom M, or axiom T. Most systems of alethic modality require that if something is in all possible worlds, it's in the actual world as well. And if something is in the actual world, it is in fact possible, which are just the two corollaries of axiom M. So while we might be able to get away with it out of deontic logic, it seems very strange for us to offer a modal logic that does not include axiom T. The problem is that while adding the alethic version of T, not the deontic version, the alethic version of T that we just stated to standard deontic logic will not create any significant changes, and most specifically, it will not cause it to turn into the augmented version of deontic logic. Adding T to KD or KS will create significant changes, and it will allow our augmented version of deontic logic, including the double obligation axiom, to be deduced. With that said, I have a challenge for you. So, what I want you to do is conclude our double obligation axiom using only the axioms of KD and our new axiom, axiom T. So really the axioms of KTD. If you want to pause the video and try it yourself right now, I highly encourage it. It's a great way to practice a lot of the skills we've just learned about reduction and how that works. But if you just want to see the answer, keep playing and we're going to keep going. So what I would do to do this is first off do an assumed conditional proof that it's necessary that D implies P and then use our axiom M or axiom T, as you will, to deduce that D does imply P, and then show through conditional proof that it's necessary that D implies P implies that D implies P. I'm then going to use implication to put a negation out front and a disjunction in the middle, associativity to pull out that not D that's kind of hiding in the middle of that set of disjunctions and move my, it's not the case that it's necessary that D implies P into those brackets. Then I'm going to use implication again to show that D implies, it's necessary that D implies P implies P. Then we're going to use our necessitation rule to put our necessitation out front, our necessary out front. Now, you may be very confused why I've done those last couple of moves. Well, the reason is 
that we're trying to formulate this into something where we can translate it back into obligations. And so if we had have first gone and translated our obligations into things, we would have seen a lot of it's necessary that D implies something. And so we now have two cases of it's necessary that D implies P, and then it's necessary that D implies something else, which is exactly what we need for our conclusion to work. We need two cases of it's necessary that D implies, and it's necessary that D implies because we have two obligations. So, to sum up what I just said and go through the actual steps, we're now going to take it's necessary that D implies P and simplify that down to it's obligatory, that P, by our KD definitions, and then we're going to take it's necessary that D implies, it's obligatory that P implies P, and use our KD definitions again to get it's obligatory that it's obligatory that P implies P, which is our conclusion. Showing that with the addition of axiom M or axiom T, whatever you want to call it, to KD, we can deduce augmented deontic logic by concluding the double obligation axiom. What this means is that either the advocate of Kangarian and Andersonian reduction must deny something that is necessary is true in the actual world, and therefore axiom M, which seems to me to be a difficult position to defend considering our understanding of alethic modality, or give up on claiming that their system is a reduction of standard deontic logic. This doesn't mean that these systems fail as deontic systems on a whole, merely that they're not a reduction of standard deontic logic, at least when axiom M is included in the system. They can still stand as separate systems on their own, or just deny axiom M and still claim to be a reduction. But it seems to me that their position as reductions of standard deontic logic is going to be debunked, because I would be very surprised to see a standard deontic logic that purposefully denied axiom M and claimed that the actual world is not a possible world. Up next, we're going to be looking at the accessibility relationship, similar to the acceptability relation we looked at earlier, but this is the accessibility relation. Once again, it's going to help us with semantics. Specifically, this is going to be the semantics of deontic reduction. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org, and watch a new video every single day for 100 days on modal logic. Stay skeptical, everybody.